Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Discount Property Investor Podcast. This is your host, David Dodge. And today I have a special guest. I have a friend that I met at a real estate investment mastermind meeting. And I was blown away when I met this guy. He's doing big things. He's got a massive team. He helps people every single day make more money and do more deals in their business. So I am super happy to have Scott Morse on the show today. Scott, how you doing today, brother? Good to see you, man. Um, brother, I appreciate the invite. I love your energy. I've loved it since the moment that I met you down in, uh, I think it was Miami where we first crossed We were paths. in Miami. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's a great place to start meeting people too, though. You know, you, you know, everybody's already on a 10 and dude, I, I loved your energy. So I appreciate the invite on here to talk about a little bit what we do and collectively and what we're, how we're both impacting the industry, man. Yeah, man. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're doing, man. Last I spoke with you, you were telling me about you guys having the best cold callers in the industry for real estate investors specifically. And I exactly. know you do some virtual investing and wholesaling yes. as well. So, dude, I want to learn all about it, man. Fill me in. Cool, man. Uh, so I think all great business models start out of a necessity, right? And so I tried to hire, I, I learned about wholesaling and you kind of virtual investing like two years ago. I was like, boom, great. I've already had a large leads portfolio call center before for a different model. And then I was like, oh, just hire a VA. That's what everybody says to do. You can hire a VA in the Philippines or Egypt or wherever. <laughs> so I tried that country. Then I tried the other country. And it was terrible, bro. I was like, yeah. I would never make my closers talk to a lead like this. Mm. So then I brought it on shore and I was like, oh, snap. For the cost per lead that you really need for this industry, I need to be offshore, but I couldn't find anybody to manage it offshore. So I was like, I'm going to pack my two daughters up and move to another country and I'm going to launch this bad boy myself. Wow. So I came down here for my own. I moved to Columbia, loved the country, loved the people, but moved to Columbia here for my own real estate investing office. And then that spun into... The monster we have today. How, how long ago did you move down there? Uh, two years and four months ago. Wow. Holy cow, man. Two years and that's not that long ago. Spoke no English, baby. None. I mean, no Spanish. Fuck. Yeah, no right Spanish. Now, speaking English. No Spanish, dude. That's amazing. So you picked it up. You built yourself a huge team. And but, but I love how you did this out of the necessity because you couldn't find the people that you wanted in your own business. So. I mean, is your business more so helping other people with this task now, or is it still an investing? You know, uh, so it's a really good question. Uh, I obviously do more dials because I have over 100 affiliates nationwide. And so I do more dials from them. I'm like one of my own affiliates, right? So I consider myself one of the 114 sure. or whatever it is. So I definitely do more for others now. Uh, but what I always tell people is I would never send you a lead. I wouldn't send myself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the dynamic change is some guys are just in it to send over data. And it's like, man, what this industry calls a lead, I call a data record. What this industry calls an opportunity is what I call a lead. Yep. I ain't wasting my closers time. I don't want to waste your closers time. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And a lot of, a lot of these virtual assistants that are out there and or companies, that's their business. They're not actively investing and buying and wholesaling and negotiating. So the fact that you're training them to do those things yes. for you and for other people, that's cool. That's amazing. So yeah, man, it's, the, it's a good go experience. Ahead. No, yeah, no, it's a good awesome. experience. So the industry's best cold callers, and this is for real estate specifically, right? Yeah. It's the primary model right now. That's awesome. All right, cool. So tell me, you know, what makes you guys the best? Yeah. So I think a lot of it starts from the top down, right? It's just the amount of experience, like my DOS or director of sales here, I met him 22 years ago, right? And I'm, I'm 41. So you're talking about long, hardcore. We met at a timeshare track 20 years ago, just really ruthless guerrilla sales over decades. And so I brought a guy, a couple of guys over from the States down here. Were you selling timeshares or you were trying to buy one? Oh yeah. 
No, no, no. I started selling timeshares at 20 years old. And that's how I got into like a, what I call like elite sales. Like Dude, the people that sell timeshares are, are hell of a good salespeople. Savages. Every time I've been pitched from a timeshare person, I'm like, God, where's the door? How do I get out of here? <laughs> They're surrounding you. They're like, come on, you're an idiot if you don't buy this. And I'm like, you're right, yeah. but I don't. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Timeshare yeah, is uh that's a great place to start, my friend. Holy cow. Yeah, that's that's where all the sales DNA genuinely came from. And I stayed in that industry for like 16 years or cohorts of that industry. And then literally I was in that from 20 to to when I discovered what a wholesaling was just uh like two and a half years ago. And I was like, oh great, this is a highly disruptable industry. The mm -hmm. way I look at wholesaling is it's hyper fragmented. So you got all these mom and pop little investors. There's a preponderance of people that are more hobbyists than like legitimate, like ruthless entrepreneurs. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Like no knock. Some people really love time fishing on the lake. Uh, cool. I love it. But it makes it highly disruptable. And then the sales skills are varying throughout. Like you don't have to be Very. a murderer to make money in real estate. Yeah. But the murderers can really dominate. And so they I just saw really <laughs> <Murder. laughs> yeah, it's great. It's amazing how as, how many people are in this industry, but yet how untapped it is. Yeah, I know. Well, there's a, there's another, there's a new motivated seller every 30 seconds, right? Somebody's Ooh. going through a distressed property situation. Someone's going through a distressed personal situation. When you find somebody that's distressed, you can help them at the same time. You can bring the neighborhood back. You know, I always, I like to talk sometimes about, you know, when somebody tries to say, you guys are taking advantage of people, right? I'll, I always say, well, you know, there's probably there's people out there doing that, obviously. But how many people are being employed when we buy a house and fix it up or even wholesale it to another investor who's going to fix it up? There's title people involved. There's contractors involved. There's survey companies involved. There's insurance companies involved. Like everybody eats when we do deals. You well, got to think about those things, right? So absolute gospel. The very first deal that I ever did for helping somebody was a young lady. And it was, I first started at PPC and then I cut on cold call because I'm really, really passionate about digital media and she's a recorded testimonial anyways. And so, but she contacted us, filled out a form when her ex-husband was in jail. He had just been put, sent to jail the night before for domestic abuse. And she's like, that's it. I'm done. I need this gone. I need to disappear out of town. I'm going to need help with the U-Haul. It can't go into my name. I need, and we ended up having to take it as a sub too, because her story was so good and her mortgage was so high. It wasn't a cash deal. And so we finessed and figured out a way to make it work. But it's those, I say we buy ugly houses in ugly situations. If it's not one of the two, we're not the right solution. We're not the right it. people, right? But dude, we're helping people. If you're doing it the right way, you're helping people out of a situation and if you're the one doing the rehabs, I've, I've gotten stuck with a, a foundation issue before. Like it sucks, but you know, we're taking the bet and we deserve to make money. It's America, but I love what we do as an industry. I love helping people help customers, man. I love it. All right. Let's talk more about that then. So if somebody wants to work with the best cold callers in the industry, what does that mean for them? What, what, like, what are you guys doing that is bringing opportunities and potential purchases to your clients. Like, you know what I'm saying? You guys have a team of cold callers. They're not in the Philippines. They're not in Egypt. Let's start there. Right. Yeah. Because right. that's what, so, that's what you, that's what you didn't like about those people, for example, that you had worked with in the beginning. So this is crazy, bro. You picked up and moved across the world. What? And literally Who put does everything this? into containers, shipped them here after I kind of scoped out an office, came down here, set it up. And it was only, I was just going to do 16 people. I was like, okay. the most we'll ever get is 16 people. We're hovering this around This was basically people. designed though for you and your business, right? In just for me and my own wholesaling okay. business. And it was that way for six or seven months. I never even considered doing it as a outsource type thing until like somebody in a mastermind was like, hey dude, can I get some callers? I was like, yeah, I guess. Well, I guess. Just add Why on a not? Couple more. Right. And then before you know it, this guy found out, and this guy found out, and then this guy found out. That's sweet. I was like, oh, this is a cool business. Like, all of you guys got the same problem. Yeah, a lot of people got this problem. But there's a difference between vanity metrics. That's something that this industry is screwed on. This industry is addicted to vanity metrics. Projected profit. Screw your projected profit. Number of leads. Screw the number of leads you got you couldn't get back on the phone. Mm -hmm. It's what's actually substance. And so we're mm. less leads than you expect, longer conversations than you've ever had. Mm. I'm not a volume play. I'm not here to say I sent you the most leads you've ever gotten in one day. Yeah, I'm you sign up with me, you're going to get 100. That's probably not the case. But you're going to get one or two or three that are going to be good. 
great people that want to talk to you, bro. I love that. Yep. People that want to talk. Do you know how frustrating it is for a real deal closer to have to act like a glorified VA because mm. they're calling underqualified leads that never should have been sent over? Mm. So that was the mantra for us. It's like, I need my closers closing. I need my fronters fronting. And so I have two separate chains. And then I say, okay, great. I'm going to do the fronting for your business. And so your closers close, my guys front. We get it highly qualified, highly motivated. Every call is 15 to 17 minutes long that wow. we're qualified. Then we send it to them and then it's on you to do your part to close. Wow. That's awesome. So you guys have multiple steps in the process. Um, are you generating the leads in the list or are they, or is there a com- I would imagine there's a combination. They get their good list from driving for dollars maybe. And they're like, hit this list hard for me. Right. Yeah. The problem is, or I shouldn't say the problem is the advantage is, is now we're at scale. Like I literally have for the first time a data scientist, his name's Leo. He's the oh, wow. bomb. We have a whole That's data sweet. management team. We have a UX team and our data analytics. Cause we're doing close to 2 million dials a month, you know, uh, 2 million dials a week. We're about 7.7, 7.8 a million dials a month right now. Man. And so we're passing all that back to something called a data lake or a repository. And I just know what lists are performing best. Yeah. So totally. if you were my client, you would say, hey, do I provide data from you or should I get data from you, Scott? And I'd say, well, how good is your data? How yeah. good are you at data integrity? Mm-hmm. And if it's not like, hey, dude, I'm running it like a well-oiled machine. I'm like, dude, let me just look into the back and tell you what lists are performing best. Let's make some recommendations. I know what zip codes, I know it all. So the reality is, is, most people's data game can't hold a candle to ours. So mm. most people are just, dude, do the front end of my business. Do the data, yeah. do the yeah. qualifying. I'll do closing and dispo. And so I take the front end of their business away. Man, that's crazy. I saw that you guys are doing dispo now too. Yeah. I mean, when you got so many- When you got so many there, people, why not? I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's amazing. You guys are helping people, you know- tee up deals and then whenever they go get them and they're too busy you can help them unload them too this i was awesome. telling them listen bro we'll get you the contract you know you market it for five days you can't move it in five days send it to me Bring it back. i take yeah. a fee, but you know it's better than returning it back and what it does honestly though david is it helps my affiliates go into new markets because they're like dude philly's my hometown i hired you we're murdering it where's next and i'm like well hey this other market is really on fire right now they're like boom i want to go in they leverage me for a dispo for two or three months and then they establish the oh, buyers. That's, a, that's list. so smart. Yeah. It just a, and like, I shouldn't be your long term solution for Dispo. I should be your, hey, you saved my ass. You allowed me to expand and then do it again in a different market. Love it. Love it, man. Holy cow. So you, you're working with over 100 different, and you refer to them as affiliates. And uh, are all of these people typically, are they, like, what kind of investors are you working with? I would imagine there's wholesalers, I'd imagine there's some fix and flippers. And I'd imagine you even got some people that are just looking to buy properties or landlords and, yeah. and, you know, all, all of it. Right. So the guys who just want to cut out wholesalers, I don't take on. And the reason why, when some guy calls me and says, Hey man, I'm tired of buying these deals from wholesalers. It's not consistent. It's not this. I say, I understand your problems, but a wholesaler is worth every single penny. You guys have been buying off a of paper for the past 20 years. You don't know how to negotiate. You don't know how to close. You don't have a nurturing system in your CRM. You don't know how to isolate data, handle objections. And so there's a difference between buying and closing. And so I don't take those guys. But if it is an art real estate investor who has an internal sales team, I'll take them. So that probably comprises of about 20% of my affiliates. The mm-hmm. other 80% nationwide are just broad dog, ruthless, established wholesalers, like wow. real deal closers. How many so of we, those people are doing it locally in their markets versus just doing it like in, in all virtual places? Bro, I, I, I would assume 95% are virtual. Okay. Wow. I, I speak the language of virtual. It's dude, I'm doing deals from Columbia, South America. Like, bro, right. your whole country is the, your, your, cause people ask me, Hey man, what market's hot? And I'll list four or five. And I'm like, let's roll. Let's roll. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Holy cow. This is crazy, man. Your energy is amazing. Every time I Thank you, bro. see you, hear you, watch <laughs> you on, I follow you on socials. You're, you're constantly putting out awesome, awesome stuff. Your office is really, really cool. Beautiful office. And man, you got a hundred plus people working in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we actually have two offices on the same street. We just signed documents for a much, much larger office uh, that hopefully we can get cured and into within the next 60 to 90 days. That allows us to go to about three to 400 people. So, wow. And you guys are, what are you at now? About 200? 
Yeah, exactly. So you're going to basically double that in the next year. That's crazy, man. And yeah. you, you just learned about this a year, two and a half years ago and moved to yeah. another place. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I was in a similar, I was selling leads to attorneys at a big South Florida call center, but the pricing model was different. So you could afford to be on shore. Mm. The margins here are, are kind of comparable, but it's just, you need to be, for me, I couldn't find a way to replicate the CPL cost per lead that you need it by paying a 22 year old kid in South Florida, $18 an hour. It just, right. it breaks the model. And so right. what we did is we found a great opportunity to be offshore, but also become the highest paying call center in the state. I have kids. I mean, it's like, I have the best hours, the best work environment, the best pay for any call center in the state right now. So something that, that we're super proud of. Dude, that is, that is awesome. Something to be very, very proud of. That's crazy. Yes. So then um, when, when you have these you know, when you have a client that comes in, do you basically allocate, you know, a, a, a person or a small team to them? Or how does that part of it work? I'm just curious. Like, would we have a point of contact with you or not, yeah, you, but, so, you know, a team? Oh, yeah. So every day I'll hit it. We really have invested highly in a tech stack. So mm -hmm. when you come in, you're just like, oh, this is truly an enterprise level call center. So everything from a data visualization tool, like we give you access to a map where you can see all your leads on the map. You can click on them and see what the customer's asking price was. We score them from like the highest score, middle and hot. So like, you know, wholesale, creative financing or like a listing lead and the mm -hmm. majority of them are obviously wholesale. Sure. So we give you that type of tool. Uh, we have a QA team, an accounting team that you interface with, a data and KPIs team. So big, big, big client team. Client success managers. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, dude, you couldn't afford in the States to comprise a 15 man team, but you can with us. And then when it comes to the callers, it's just, yeah, 80 some 90 some people just on that segment of the phone campaigns wow. and it's just like boom we just hit your account and then boom it's done for the day and hit the next guy and the next guy and the next guy that's and awesome you'll feel it waterfall uh faucet on faucet off of leads yep. it's great dude that's amazing so then so why columbia south america what what brought you there and and i'd imagine probably because it's a not egypt and b not the philippines <laughs> yeah. So the problem that I think a lot of people suffer with the Philippines or any, any, even Colombia, right? You, I'm sure you could find some of the same pain points. If I were to go to Egypt and set it up, I think I would have a similar success. If I were to go to the Philippines, I think I would personally drive a similar success. The distinct advantages for Colombia are this is a very American loved culture, right? They watch all the American movies. You hear all the American rock, but the most well, they're in America. If you think about it, yes. outside of U.S. of A, they're in America, yep. I mean, they're in South America. Yeah. OK, 100 percent, 100 percent. It's a very and a, a lot of my kids grew up in the States and then came back here because mom got sick. Like mm. I'd say 40 percent of my floor has lived some amount of time in the United States, Australia or That's the UK. Great. OK, it's super OK. But the best part is they understand American sarcasm. Yeah. Which yeah. fucking matters. Excuse my language. It does. Podcast, but it matters on the phone with these types of sellers. I want a million dollars, you know, <laughs> people in Egypt are like, well, maybe hey, we, we got a fire lead you for you. Right. Yeah, it, so understanding that, uh, it meant a lot to me. So yeah, I've researched, we did our diligence. This is what we discovered. And, uh, I felt comfortable with making the move here. Yeah, man. And you guys have beautiful views, man. I, I see some of the stuff in your socials looking out over the ocean. It's awesome, man. How far away are you guys from the coast? Just a couple miles. <laughs> so or? I'm actually in the coffee triangle, but it's so easy to go. So I'm in the middle of the Andes. Um, and so I can look out my window right now and see coffee trees growing on the side. And just, it's the most beautiful vistas. I'm super happy. Uh, maybe a flight to the ocean is an hour ish, hour yeah. 10, something like okay. that. Oh, that's not far. That's awesome. So you guys are like in, in, you're out in the mountains, bro. I'm in super mountains. Do I say I have to, they're called guacamayas. I don't, uh, I forget what they're called. Dude, my morning routine with all these crazy tropical birds flying around my house every morning. Oh, it's so great. Dude, that sounds awesome. I love yeah, it. it. I don't I know if I'll it. ever go home. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to get down there and check out the operation at some love point and uh, check out the country too. I've been really wanting to get down there, man. It seems like a, like a really, really awesome, beautiful, cool culture, yeah. nice people, you know, Super safe cool. place to be. So yeah, definitely want to yeah. come check it out, man. Well, Scott, this has been great, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for telling us about the operation. You can, yeah. you can basically... Work with Scott and you can have a team of people that are going to help you. They speak great English. They, some of these people were born in America or they've spent a lot yes. of time 
you know, in the United States. They understand sarcasm. You have multiple uh, lines. You have people that are fronting and, and basically open in conversations and seeing if people have interest, engaging. And then you have a team of closers that are going to come in and they're going to help you, uh, you know, tee it up, get it under contract, set the appointment for you, whatever it is that you're looking to do. And these guys are the best in the business. Um, when I was, when I met Scott and I talked to him down in Miami, he was telling me, you know, about his operation and everything he was saying to me, I was like, what, how many that big? Wow. <laughs> so this guy is the real deal. Um, you can check him out. There's a link below this video. If you guys want to connect and book a call with somebody on Scott's team to learn more about his business, his business is called Lama Sioux media. And, um, again, click the link below this podcast episode. It will connect you to him and his people. You can book a call. You can learn more. And if you're tired of dealing with cold callers that have to get through thousands and thousands of people because they don't understand humor, they don't understand sarcasm, they don't speak good English, go work with the people that do. These are the guys are the best in the business. I can assure you. Um, so yeah, Scott, thanks for coming on, man. This has been a pleasure. Always good to connect with you and learn more about your business. And uh, man, you guys are doing big things. You're going to be doubling in the next year too. Holy cow. I appreciate it, brother. And until we see you again in Miami or Vegas or Texas or wherever Somewhere it fun. is next. All right. That's right. Cool. You're the man. All right, I Scott. Thanks, it. buddy. Signing off, guys. Don't forget, you make your money when you buy. You get paid when you sell. Until next time. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.